to record in 4K resolution. 2160p is another name for it. Go to the settings tab in OBS Studio. I'm gonna walk you through all the best settings that you need, including hardware, encoding, all those advanced things you need to know to do this very, very intensive recording task. Awesome. Your first step here in the settings tab is going to be video. Over here on the left-hand side, this is where we will select your resolution and your frame rate for your project. I already have it entered here, but you will need to manually enter this yourself and copy it. 3840 by 2160 is your resolution you'll need to do 4K. And so here within the base canvas resolution, by entering that 4K resolution there, that makes your canvas down here where you have your content B 4K resolution. So what you see here in your canvas with me waving here, hi, will actually be what your recording looks like essentially. I recommend matching the canvas with the output, which is located right here. You're gonna copy the 3840 by 2160 and paste it right here. So your canvas is 4K and your recording is now 4K by doing that. For your downscale filter, I recommend bumping this up to 36 samples because your computer is probably very powerful. So you will not have issues doing that. And you will have two different frame rate values that you can choose from. So 30 FPS is the one that I'm using right now to do this recording. But if you are planning on doing something that requires a lot of motion, like gameplay, for example, or a really high quality, high motion video trailer or video playback, you'll want to bump that up to 60 frames per second. For most of you, 30 will be totally sufficient. And that's what we use for the demo today. But I will tell you later on and show you what bit rate you need if you're doing a 60 frames per second recording. Your next stop is to hit apply down here, but do not yet hit okay. We've got a few other things we need to do first. Go to the audio tab as your next stop. For your sample rate, select the sample rate that your audio device that you're capturing on likes. If you don't know what, that is, what it is, Google it. Google the name of your audio device and type sample rate. It will likely be 44.1 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz minus 48. I recommend disabling every single audio device by default right here. It'll enable your microphone and desktop audio by default. Disable that. You do not want that stuff popping up down here on accident or without you setting it up properly in your audio mixer. I recommend adding every single audio device manually in OBS Studio. Link in the description below to my tutorials playlist on how to set those up manually. If you don't do this, you may be confused when you have random audio popping into your recording you did not put there. Hit apply, but do not yet hit OK. Our next stop is going to be the output tab. This is where the majority of the settings are located for 4K recordings. By default, this tab will be looking like this. It'll be on simple mode. You don't really want to use simple mode when you're doing 4K recording. You want to go into the advanced mode that unlocks all of the best settings for 4K. We're not doing streaming today, so skip the streaming tab today. I'll have a separate tutorial on that. Recording tab is actually our first stop right here. Click the recording tab. Once you arrive here, you'll want to select a recording path that is a custom folder that you've made by hitting browse and go find a storage drive on your computer if you have one or find a drive on your computer that's a terabyte or bigger is my recommendation. Create a folder on that drive and then select that folder to drop all your recordings into. These are going to be big recordings, very big recordings. For your recording format, I highly recommend MP4. It is the most compatible and most universal recording format that can be used by virtually every app and program on Earth. For audio track, I recommend only checking audio track 1 for now unless you have some sort of advanced configuration. Here is the most important thing for you to pay attention to in this video, your encoder. You're doing a 4K recording. That means that you are going to use a massive load on your CPU, your processor, your Intel or AMD processor, if you decide to use the X264 encoder, which is the standard encoder that you would normally use. I do not recommend using the X264 encoder when you're attempting 4K recordings. I recommend instead doing the NVIDIA NVENC encoder 
If you do not have that available, it's probably because you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card. I recommend getting one if you don't have one and you're trying to do 4K recordings. That encoder will take the load off of your processor. And I'm going to demonstrate this later on in this tutorial to show you the difference between using X264, which will gobble up 20, 30, 40, 50, 100% potentially of your processor on your computer, tanking your computer, versus using the NVIDIA encoder, which will use almost none of your CPU as you're doing these recordings. If you'd like a recommended computer that can handle this, just out the box, you just pick it up and it just works, this is my recommended computer. I've set up multi-million dollar webinars I've run on this computer. It is a 4K creator laptop that has all of the hardware you need under $2,000. It's got an RTX 2060 graphics card, 32 gigabytes of RAM, the fastest processor available in any laptop on earth, and most importantly, a 4K monitor built in. This under $2,000, this machine is amazing. If you tried to get a desktop PC with a 4K monitor and a keyboard and a mouse with all of these specs, you'd be paying about the same price or more unless you built it from scratch yourself. This also has a one terabyte storage drive built in, SSD, which is big enough to handle these giant 4K recordings, all right? Link in the description below to this machine if you want my recommended machine for recording in 4K. If you just wanna buy something that just works today, link below to that. Okay, so now that you have the hardware you need to use the NVIDIA encoder, which is my recommended method, you'll need to select your rate control. I highly recommend using constant bit rate if you want to keep your quality consistent. If you want to, you can select VBR instead of CBR, and that's a variable bit rate. A variable bit rate will go up and down and up and down depending on what's happening on the screen, and you will have fuzziness and pixelation from time to time. For most cases, I recommend constant bit rate. Since you're doing 4K, you're probably doing this because you want to maximize your quality, right? Great. Here comes your recommended bit rates. They're gigantic <laughs> for 4K video, okay? So the minimum bit rate that I would recommend for doing 4K recordings at 30 frames per second, which is what our project currently is, you're gonna bump this up to 45,000 kbps. That means you're gonna be using 45 megabytes every single second you're recording. That's pretty crazy. All right, if your project is 60 frames per second instead of 30, your bit rate should be up closer to 68,000 kbps. That is you using 60 megabytes every second you are recording. That is going to be a gigantic recording, by the way. All right, that bit rate is very high, and that bit rate is based on YouTube's recommendations for uploads at these particular bit rates and frame rates. Those are your minimums, in my opinion, that I would recommend recording at. You can bump it up from there if you want, but those are the minimums that I recommend using. I'm gonna bump mine back down to the minimum for 30 frames per second that I would recommend, which is 45,000 kbps. Leave your keyframe interval at zero, and for your preset, y'all are going for quality, aren't you? So bump that up to max quality, great. I do not recommend using look ahead in this in most cases, but if you want to use look ahead, then go ahead and check this box and then bump up your GPU to two if you're gonna use look ahead. Okay, uncheck look ahead for most of you and bump it down to zero. There are problems with look ahead. Great, you're done with the recording tab now. What you're gonna do is hit apply, but you're not done. You need to not hit okay yet. The next stop is your audio tab. You're going for quality, right? Most people ignore the audio tab and the quality of their audio is not good. Click the audio tab and by default, track one right here is going to be at 160 bit rate. That's not that good. That's a low quality to mid tier quality MP3. You want to maximize that quality by dropping down this menu and increasing this value to 320. That will turn it into a maximum quality mp3 recording that's good you can now hit apply and then hit okay you have my permission my friends hit apply and okay here we are if you changed your resolution 
of your canvas and your inputs kind of look size down like this. That'll happen to most of you probably who did this. Right click on whatever it is, whatever video source you have, go down to transform and do fit to screen and it will go full screen on your 4K canvas. To do your recording, to start it, click the Start Recording tab down here in the bottom right-hand corner, and there are some critical things to monitor. Hit Start Recording. Okay, so I'm using my graphics card to handle this. I see the red dot here. It's confirmed that it's recording, and notice how my CPU usage, my processor, is only at 5 to 6%. As I wave and give it more data, this will bump up to... Five or six percent, it's staying pretty steady. That means that the rest of my computer, that means that 94% of my computer is available for me to do whatever I want to do while I'm doing this recording. This is why I recommend getting the laptop I recommended or some kind of 20 series or 30 series in video graphics card. That's great. 94% of your CPU is available. Let me show you what happens when you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card and you're not using that encoder. So we're going to go back to the settings that we were looking at earlier. I'm gonna to go to the recording tab and instead of using the NVIDIA one, I'm gonna switch it to X264. I'm gonna bump this up to 45,000, the same settings we were just using a moment ago. And I'm just gonna show you the difference. I'm gonna start the recording and then look right down here. As I wave my arms, and I have one of the top five fastest processors on earth, by the way, on this computer, my CPU usage is at 93%. 93%. This is one of the fastest processors on earth on this computer. Do you see that? <laughs> okay, guys, X264 is probably not going to work out for you, okay? So I'm going to stop recording so I don't tank this whole tutorial video. So that is bad. So you have to have something like an NVIDIA encoder in order to pull any of this off. If this confused you at, you all, at all, or you want help at all with your 4K home studio and setup, I literally have been doing this for a living, helping creators the last 10 years. I've been a technical director for the highest level events in audiovisual industry for 15 years. Book me, awalldigital.com for one-on-one -on -one coaching. You can scroll down the page. You select your date. You select your time. You enter your information. And I'm on a one-on-one -on -one call with you, consulting with you, helping you with your YouTube strategy, your social media strategy, your live streaming strategy, how you build your online business, and how to set up and operate your home studio. Link in the description below to that. Happy broadcasting, everybody.